Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or holiday special from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about it in about an hour. And this week's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, this is going to be a little strange. Uh, no pun intended there. Uh, <laughs> happy holidays to everybody. I just want to say that first of all. Happy everything. Thank you for listening to Geek Coaster Lesson in, in 2022. I almost said 2023. We're not there yet. Eep. Um, so you know that usually around the end of the year in December, um, our Geek Coaster Lesson feed goes a little strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, no pun intended. Why do I keep saying that? Um, you know, yeah, strange on the brain. Every once in a while, we have these people come in mm-hmm. and they usually take over the podcast. Um, you know, they usually like come in our feed. They'll drop an episode. Mm-hmm. It's a husband and a wife. And this year, uh, they kind of asked us. Like last year, they asked us, and this year they got married. I think on the podcast, they they wanted to get married in the Geek Social Lesson well, feed. Last year, they threatened us. They took Brego. That's right. This year, they, I would say, uh, encouraged us. If anyone has uh, seen, maybe it's not released yet, um, our final entry in Marvel Club, you can actually see the demonic possession of intern Cat Brego, which they wrought upon us to get this episode to happen. That's right. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, if you do go over to listen to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, we've been doing this series called Marvel Club, and we just did a really cool review, uh, Spider-Man 1 Very fun. And in that video, our podcast intern Cat Brego is Oh, oh, he's climbing up the chair. <laughs> Out of his absolute he's mind. He's chewing stuff in the background. He's yelling. And yeah. It's a very atypical Brego behavior. Um, Doctor Strange, uh, the former Source Supreme, and his wife, Clea, the current Source Supreme, they bewitched our cat, mm-hmm. our, our podcast intern, and they said they will not release him until we let them do an episode in the Geek Hush Lesson feed. And... Yeah, I, I don't, did we have did we have any choice? I mean, I mean, yeah. So they're gonna take over our feed. This, the full episode is gonna be Doctor Strange and Clea giving you their holiday special. Yeah. Um. You know, we don't know what they have planned. Uh, we don't know what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we love to inform and educate, and we just have no idea what these two are gonna do. We don't. But again, I don't. It hasn't caused any problems yet. I don't, I mean, I don't think been, our feed has been yet. possessed. No, that's true. So I think if we just let them do this, we'll be scot free for another year. I know that's the wrong franchise, but yeah, I'm committing to it. Scot free yes. for another year. Yes. Okay. So uh, we're gonna give the show over. Yep. To Doctor Strange and Clea. Yep. Um, we hope you enjoy it. We hope they put on a good show. We 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 have nothing to do. With we wash this. our hands of it. Yes, it could be quite terrible. Mm-hmm. It could be uh, a very enjoyable time. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't know what they're gonna do. Yeah. So, uh, we hope you enjoy it. Have a happy holidays. Um, send good thoughts, vibes, spells, prayers to yeah. uh, Intern Caprego. That's right. That's right. And uh, take it away, Doctor Strange and Clea. Hello! Ho, ho, ho! I've never done that before. It's Doctor Strange, Doctor Stephen Strange, and welcome to the Doctor Strange Holiday Special. We're coming into your airwaves, giving you those jive jives and those 50s hits like, like you've always wanted, yeah. And this is Mrs. Center Klaus. Just kidding. This is Clea. And I have spent so much time since we came to Earth doing research on what Christmas actually is. And I know you're probably confused because I was a very good actor. Yes. And I've been a very good actor on all the past ones. But this year, I am here to bring holiday cheer. And we are excited to hear Clea's Christmassy bits and pieces and dingles and dangles. But first... We gotta have a serious note. We have to have a serious talk here. Clear. Okay. Serious time. I'm ready, Stevie. We we requested this airtime yes. from you know the you know I think his name is Basin, Basin, mm-hmm. Basin, Co- Basin Jinman, Basin and Costly, mm-hmm. the hosts of uh, the Nerd History Lesson, and um, because it's, it's serious times, folks. I don't know if you out there. 
as you're looking out your windows at the blizzard that is currently covering your car and 10 feet of snow, or if you're currently looking out your window at your car being covered by 10 feet of sand, or if you're looking out your window and seeing your car covered by 10 feet of peeps. Or your car covered by 10 other cars. That would be a problem. It is. It's a rough time out there. Mm-hmm. It has been a rough mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. There's, there's been a magical recession. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, our president of the dark dimension. Wong. Uh, yes, Wong. Uh, has declared it a magical recession. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you heard from us, you know, last time you heard from us, uh, you know, Klee and I beautifully got married by mm-hmm. the lovely mm-hmm. Kingo. And I retired as Sorcerer Supreme. And Clea is now, you're still the Sorcerer Supreme, right, Clea? I am the best Sorcerer Supreme. I agree. I, I Thanks, totally, love. I totally agree that I think you're the best. And I love how many times I've been able to get to the golf course this year. I'm doing well on the back nine hitting those birdies. What's your handicap? Uh, negative five. Ooh, pretty good. Is that good? I have no idea. I don't either. We don't have golf in the dark dimension. There's no Scottish people in the dark dimension. I just did it because I saw it in a James Bond movie once. Ooh, who's your favorite James Bond? Doctor Strange. George Lazenby. Bold choice. <laughs> it's the only choice if you're a true James Bond fan. It's Lazenby or not. Mine's David Niven. <laughs> He's the most popular James Bond in the Dark Dimension. Really, I was about to say that. I was about that was uh, George Lazenby, according to my uh, research. No, David Niven. <laughs> David Niven from the TV special Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't know we were such Bond fans. <laughs> well, Stevie, clearly you uh, bl- blacked out during all of our times where we have discussed having a James Bond podcast. Mm, yes, we have. Well, you know, in the Dark Dimension, it's been we've been getting too much light, mm-hmm. too much sunshine. Mm-hmm. It's so bright down there that we have to cut costs, cut corners, cut our own hair. Well, and there's a reason that when you and I are on Earth, we live in New York and not California. We don't want this much sunlight. Well, I wanted to say, too, as well, in New York, times fit us so tough that um, we actually lost um, the Sanctum Sanctorum. We don't own it anymore. We we own it, but we're filling it with VRBOs and Airbnbs. Mm Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it? We're Airbnb the, Bals. Yes. We're Airbnb the reason right Airbnb is Airbnb currently Bals. trending on Twitter because we charge exorbitant cleaning fees because people are filthy. Yes. Humans are gross. I actually don't think it's that high. One golden dragon egg or mm-hmm. get the hell out. Exactly. Like, That's a fair price. We're, we're, <sighs> humans should understand this because we're just playing by Targaryen rules. <laughs> And that's popular. That I was, understand pop culture references. You do? I what, do. What other pop culture do you understand? Mostly Christmas. Mostly Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glia, let me ask you a question here. Yes. Since you understand Christmas, you are an expert on Christmas. I am. Because as the new Sorcerer Supreme, mm-hmm. I take my duty to human beings very seriously. Oh, very good And of you. in the last year, in an effort to better understand my human subjects, I have been watching. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not, you don't rule them, Clea. I can make them do whatever I want. Is that not ruling? I mean, don't let the humans. I'm basically that. Henry the Eighth. You better hope I don't chop off your head. Mm. And then they write a musical about it. Is that the six, the six, the six musical that I'm hearing yes, about. Yes, there are two who get beheaded. You could get divorced, beheaded, die, divorced, beheaded, or survive. So you're Which one saying do you want? you're saying if I buy tickets to this play, I get to see a beheading on stage. Two. Wow, I'm gonna go. Yeah. How much blood is there? None. I'm not going to go. Anyway. <laughs> it's presentational. Uh, so we should tell you. Well, no, but so I, oh, I, sorry, I sorry. have been watching nothing but Christmas movies over the last What's year. What's your favorite one? My favorite Christmas movie is going to be. Hmm, Man of Steel? I think. No, not Man of Steel. Definitely not Iron Man 3. Definitely not a Christmas story. That one's super boring. White Christmas. Irving Bing, Berlin is Bing, unironically my favorite composer. The Bing Crosby special? Yes. That was a TV movie, wasn't That's it? That's a timely was reference. Was it a TV movie? Who knows? I think it was a TV I'm movie. I'm not from Earth. That's true. I am. You are. I don't know. Is it a TV movie? <laughs> I think so. TV? <laughs> I'm saying it right now. You know what? If it's not a TV movie, I am going, you know what? Here we go. I, I have a little bit of magic left. I, you know, I, I, you have lots of magic left. Yeah. So it's a TV movie now. I made it so. Oh, you altered history just like you did in Spider-Man. I did. So we, listen, we are actually, I don't know if you can hear this, but we are recording in a Chili's. I unironically love Chili's. Yes. You like them baby back, baby back, baby back reeves. 
No, I like the sliders. Oh, that's true. You like them baby back, baby back, baby back sliders. Mm-hmm. We love chilies. We do. We're not sponsored by. I wish we were sponsored by. We have lots of sponsors this episode. We have almost too many sponsors this episode. Chilies, you can sponsor us at any. Chilies, you can. We give give us one of those. You, they don't have the awesome blossom. They have the uh, little uh, faker petals, onion petals, the faker petals, the the fake petals. They're not real mm-hmm. petals. They're fake petals, but it's still delicious. They're still delicious. So, chilies, you can sponsor us at any time because we actually listeners. We should tell you we again. It has been a magical recession this year. It mm-hmm. has been rough. Mm-hmm. We have. Almost too many sponsors of this episode. Mm. Too many. We need to pay the bills. We do. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, get. We need to kick the verbos out. It's hard to get potions. It's mm-hmm. hard to get spells. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get newts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you might want to listen to the commercials because uh, these aren't going to be regular commercials. They, they, we've we reached out to some friends. Basically, our friends. They're magical commercials. Yeah, you could say that. And we said, "Hey, five dollars," and they said, "Yes." Yes. Uh, weirdly, we I think we only sold commercials to one person, and we'll they bought see. all the commercials. I'm pretty certain that's why it was. But anyways, uh, so uh, Clea, um, yes, yeah, Steverini. Thank you. Uh, that's not my name. Uh, Stephen Strange. Um, you know, I, I've been kind of stressed during this time. But how have you and your first year Sorcerer Supreme been dealing with the magical recession? Oh well, I would say for me, it has uh, just been really. It's been difficult for me because I'm also learning empathy as I'm learning human pop culture. Okay. And so for the first time, I have empathy in my life. And watching you struggle has been really hard on me. What are the Christmas movies taught you about empathy? They taught me that I can throw Severus Snape off a building in downtown Los Angeles and feel nothing. I didn't. I didn't think you. Were, I, you so you're that aware that Die Hard is a Christmas movie, Clea. You I have to. Your say, research has has gone really far. It's been a whole year. <laughs> Here's. Have you been doing anything as Sorcerer Supreme or just watching Christmas movies? Stevie, is the most powerful magic not the magic of Christmas? Of course it is. But answer my question, please. <laughs> <laughs> I have done almost nothing, except, as you know, Bully Wong, one of my. Hobbies. Yes. The president of the doc dimension now. Yeah. yeah. He's a bud. It's our love language. Yeah. It's violent. He also smokes buds. Only the most high quality. Uh, of course. He lives in Nepal. Yes. And c- <laughs> cultivates his own. He's truly organic. Yeah. It's, it's rad stuff, man. But I spend a lot of time fighting people on Reddit because I don't think <laughs> okay. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Do you think it's like a Halloween movie? I think just because something is set during a made up holiday set. Six months after the actual time of the events, it does not make it a holiday movie. I listened to a podcast recently where they said Batman Returns was the best Christmas movie of all time. I don't know Batman. I don't know her. <laughs> That's him, but sure. I mean, do you know how you know how many genders we have in the Dark Dimension? Seventeen. I can't deal with this binary. I think they're going to add an eighteenth next year. That was what uh, Gurgerzok told me last. Our neighbor Gurgerzok. Oh, good for them. Yeah, yeah. Good, yep. good, good. We got to clear up. We got to. We finally seventeen pronouns is not enough. Yep. Got to add. It's 18th. about damn time. Mm-hmm. Eighteen mm-hmm. magical eighteen. Um. So you just been watching Christmas movies? Yes. All right. And bullying Wong. Yeah, and bullying Wong. And. and- Making love what's to you, your, but we don't talk about that. What's your least favorite Christmas movie of My all the ones you've seen? least favorite Yeah, which Christmas one do you, which movie? one are you just like, that one's overrated? The that. Holiday. The Holiday. Cameron Diaz has ho- The Holiday. They're going to yes. make a sequel to that, I yeah, heard. Jack Black's The Holiday. Oh, Jack Black, yes. Oh, you know who else is in that movie? Jude uh, Law. <laughs> no, the great- Kate Winslet. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Secret Bad wizard, Ug- or uh, some may call him ugly wizard, depending on which version you watch. <laughs> Eli Wallach. <laughs> See, he's not good. <laughs> he might be bad or ugly, depending on which translation of his name you follow. I have to say, if you're a being of higher power, like Steve Rific and I are, mm-hmm. and all of your chakras are aligned, and your third eye and your fourth eye and your fifth eye and your sixth eye are completely open to all of the complications of the multiverse, is there even such a thing as ugly? Well, that's that's true. It's everything is beautiful, but Eli Wallach is ugly. He's ugly, and I mean that in his soul, not his looks. He's a beautiful man. Distinguished. 
Yes. He's a very- and as we know, he didn't die. He merely moved down the block from us in the dark dimension. Yeah, he, he went to the dark dimension. He's, he's still alive in the dark dimension. Mean, he, he's given me some of the best gardening tips I've dude, ever had. Look, we are only recording this podcast on Earth. I know he's never going to hear it. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why I'm saying But you do not want to cross paths with Eli, character actor Eli Warwick. I will say, he has gotten into the yard several times because he is still looking for the ecstasy of gold. Who isn't? True. <laughs> Particularly in a post-capitalist society. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, 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 what were you going to call me? Huh? <laughs> what's Eli Wallach. What's my name? Eli Wallach. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, Claire Strange. Well, I'll clear. Colin. I'll clear. <laughs> Sorcerer uh, Supreme. You're like Colin the, Eli Wallach. You're like the All Father. All clear. All clear. You're all clear. I am the All Mother. You're all clear everywhere, everything at once. Ooh, yes. am I the person of the year? Is that a Christmas movie? Yes. I'm going to say yes, because the theme of Christmas is family. It, it, that's what you've learned through your studies of Christmas movies of humans, that the, the theme of Christmas is family and or, only family. Or slaughter. There's a lot of very violent Christmas movies. There are a lot. What is your, what, what is your opinion on Krampus as the source of Supreme? Have you had to fight a Krampus this year? Oh, I love me a Krampus. There is no better tussle, no better throwdown you can have than with the Krampus. Have you met Kenny Krampus from Kentucky yet? No, the only real Krampi, as we know, come mm. from Scandinavia and Germany. No, Ken, this Kenny Krampus lives in Kentucky. He's a good old boy. Does he have, well, good old boy. Does he He's have a good old boy. horns? Yes. Does he have a beard? Yes. Does he beat children with a stick? I'm pretty certain he does. Look at his police record. Sounds like a Krampus. Yes, Kenny Krampus. Mm. Uh, he's a good fella. Maybe we'll have him on next year. Uh, well, let's hope. Kenny Krampus, uh, come on down. Anyways, <laughs> we could probably pull him in right now if you want to. Come do. on down. No, let's not do that. Anyways, uh, so, Clea, you know, in this stressful yeah, you know, I have had to learn magical Yoda. I have had to l- magical Yoda. Yes, I've learned magical Yoda. Mm-hmm. Yes, tell me more, Stevie. I know this year's been hard on all of us, but it's been. I don't think the listeners know it's been particularly hard on you. Well, I have been, uh, um, you know, doing the breathing exercises of Danaki, and uh, you know, uh, mastering pranayama. I understand. Yes, and learning more magical Yodas, mm-hmm. as they would say. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's sometimes you know, I just it's it's been it's been a it's been a, a hot salve. So because in the interest of transparency and connecting with our human listeners, uh, what what are some of the breathing exercises that you learn? Would you share it with oh, us? Oh, yes. Uh, so you just, you just, you breathe in, you, and then you, you know, you just, you do a pattern. It's a pattern, mm-hmm, you know? So mm-hmm, here, mm-hmm. here's, it, they're always patterns. So here's one of them, you know. And whoever saw it, he would probably claw. So, listeners, what's important about that as the spouse is that when you hear your partner doing that, you know that you have to give them space and time to get their beep together. Because their magic has been flowing away. And the breathing exercise helps them pull the magic out. And love came to say. Good you can job, know I bet those. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's okay, everyone. That's all good. I have an ultimate plan to save our year. Yay! I, I have a plan, Clear, mm-hmm. uh, to bring the jingle jingle back to our mojo. Ooh, or the jingle Stevie. jingle. Stevie, we can't talk about that on the air. We are going to have, we can, we are going to have a Marvel Cinematic Universe guest that will join us for this part. We, they're going to help put us back on top of Paramount Mountain. Yes. That's off my favorite mountain. Captain Pike lives there, you know. Underneath the Universal Stars. Yes, and besides the Warner Brothers Water Tower. And we'll see. I don't know. And un- I got nothing. And under the dead bodies of Frankenstein's house. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, with that Columbia Pictures lady and the pony somewhere. Next to the dumpster of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> with monkey paw pointing accusingly from down the street. And beside the ditch of the Food Network. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so we're going to have a special guest mm-hmm. and I think they're going to help put us back. They're going to help us defeat the magical recession or just make our year pretty good. So we're going to, we're going to fight back against Matt. So instead of seasonal depression, we're going to fight against magical depression. Oh, very good. Yes. Yay. yes, yes. Also a solution against magical depression is to take your meds. We support that. Yes. Or do breathe the next mm-hmm, reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, but both. first, I'm sorry. We have to take a break, but. I would suggest you listen to these commercials, wink, wink. I would suggest that, uh, you know, perhaps these commercials might be interesting. We have some interesting sponsors that bought some ad time on our Chili's 
very special show. Yeah. So we had to sell ads. I'm sorry. It's a very bad year. We're very poor right now. Well, we're not poor. We're, our pockets are just empty. We're bereft. Yeah, my crypto accounts went to hell. You knew crypto wasn't real. I know, because Dormammu created it. A strange coin, though, is still going strong. It is going strong. Mm-hmm. It's very well, primarily because of your magical powers, my dear. You're welcome. Yes. All right, so we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after this. I'd like some gasoline, please. Yes, sir. Fill it up. All the way to the top, if you catch my meaning. Yes, sir. Say, did you know that Texas Titanic Texas Tour Show of tip-top, top-notch gasoline stations can help you drive down the cost of driving? You don't say. Yes, sir. Our gasoline can keep your valves like this from getting like this. Yeah. You see, with those harmful deposits on your valves, you can get better mileage and the chance of expensive repairs is much less by buying our gasoline. Well, in that case, I'll make sure not to drink it. <laughs> your tank is full, Mr. Willerman. Say, wait a minute. How did you know I was Tex Willerman? Who else would buy 250 gallons of gasoline? <laughs> Damn, you got me, Gan. So, if you're new to gasoline, come on down to... What's that name again? I'm not saying it again. <laughs> when new locations are coming to Chalty, Texas in 2023. That's a real place. Look it up. Use Google, you fool. And we're back. Welcome back to the Doctor Strange Holiday Special. I'm Doctor Strange. I'm Kalia Strange, colon, Sorcerer Supreme, colon, Eli Wallach. You're not Eli Wallach. That's our neighbor. That's what you told me I was before. Okay. Anyways, uh, we are here. As you know, we've been saying we're in a magical recession. Mm -hmm. Times have been Mm -hmm. tough. Clear is the new Sorcerer Strange. Mm -hmm. And we're selling ad times. We have a plan. You'll have to stick around to the end of the episode. We have a plan. We said... Megan and Harry are doing it. Clea and Stevie can do Who it. Who are Megan and Harry? Honestly, I'm pretty sure. Are these dark wizards? I'm pretty sure that Megan might be the most powerful woman on Earth who's interested in deconstructing power structures. I don't know, but I'm rooting for her. Really? She mm-hmm. she is the most powerful, this Megan creature is the most powerful woman on Earth, you say. How have I never heard of her? Let me ask you a question about mm-hmm. that. Uh, would you say... um? That she has like a particular fondness for a certain kind of men. What what's what's her type? Her type or the person she's married to? <laughs> well, I would assume the person she's married to is her type. Uh, she's married to a very m- m- powerful prince. But what does he look like? Oh, a potato with red hair. <laughs> A potato. She uh, married a Mr. Potato Head? He's he's English. He looks like a potato. They are creatures. They walk around, mm-hmm. Mr. Potato Heads. Yeah. They're, she, all of England is populated by walking married, potatoes. She, uh, what was that again? All of England is populated by walking potatoes. Walking potatoes. That's <laughs> not what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> I said walking potatoes. I, I thought, uh, I know you're from the dark dimension. And I many am. times we have to wash your mouth out with soap because you enjoy it so much. But I thought, I, I thought we were going to have to do kink. it. It's my kink. I will. There's no kink shaming here. No. I will uh, I unironically reduce the population of any country on earth since I rule them all as the Sorcerer Supreme. That's not true. To a food metaphor. Okay. France, walking cheeses. Uh, Clea, you know, we've been married for about a year now. It's the yeah. first year. It's, uh, some Bliss like, honeymoon some, phase. It's the honeymoon phase, yes. Mm-hmm. What would be your tips to our listeners for... Um, some marriage tips in in sort of troubling the troubling dark times that we live in. What would you say? What would be some tips that could people could save their magical mojo in dark times? Okay, this goes out to all the women. If you are looking to save your magical mojo and you're newly wed or thinking about becoming newly wed, violently seize power because your husband maybe kind of dies, and never give it back, and then you get whatever you want. It's pretty great. What if the dies part doesn't happen? Violently seize power, and then you get whatever you want. So it's pretty great. There's always going to be a death, basically. 
I didn't say death. I said violently seize power. Okay. Well, it's very bad. Very bad. Uh, what would you say to uh, a wife mm-hmm. or a husband mm-hmm. that has a wife or a husband mm-hmm. that their partner mm-hmm. gets very stressed? Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? I would say to them that you have to make sure that you pat them on their little head and you say, there, 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 there. And you let them do whatever makes them feel better. Because if you have violently seized power, you can just take care of whatever is bothering them. And then they don't have to worry about it. What if they like to play 18 hole golf with a full bag of clubs on a miniature golf course? What if that is their thing? Then you should let them and you should spell their golf bag so that it's not as heavy for them to carry because that can cause stress. Mm. What if they go to the same set miniature golf course Mm -hmm. with a full bag of clubs, Mm -hmm. you're there, Mm -hmm. but they rob children? What would you say to that? I would say make sure that you spell the children so that they don't remember it. Or nobody listens to kids anyway. You'll probably be fine. Mm. Uh, Just just one moment, Cleo. Mm Mm-hmm. Magically make the children forget. I know I was forgetting something. Oh, this heart attack is beginning. It's been such a stressful year. Stevie. Mm. Steve Arini, baby. Yes. You're turning purple. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going back to normal. Colors. Do you need Cloaky to come and give you a hug? Cloaky, yes. I forgot about Cloaky. I know Cloaky. you've been kind of sad because he's been uh, on my shoulders because I am now Sorcerer Supreme, but he would like, he could give he's you been, a hug. Wait, wait. He's been doing what to your shoulders? Riding on them. Crokey! He's literally my coattails, babe. Crokey! Look at me in the eyes. Whoosh. Look away. Whoosh. You watch yourself. All right. Um, you know, uh, Clea, I would like to ask you more about your holiday movies. Yes. Uh, your pop culture expertise. Who would you say if Santa Claus... Santa Claus. ...is the king of Christmas? Mm-hmm. Who is the queen in your opinion. Ooh, that's a tough question. Who is the queen of Christmas? The queen of Christmas. Or the queen of the holidays. We don't have to narrow it down. We're like That's true. We don't have to narrow. I mean, just of the holiday of of the Hanukkahs and the Kwanzas and all of the holidays. Okay. Uh, I, Yule, who would you say is the queen of just, you know, the winter solstice? I am going to say that the queen of the winter solstice is Michelle Yao for her supporting role in the HBO Max uh, 2019 movie Last Christmas. Did Michelle Yao buy ad time on this podcast? <laughs> I just think Michelle are Yao you her, are you is her, an icon. Are you her publicity manager? I should be so lucky. Mm, you know I've met Michelle Yao. I do know that, in fact. Yes. <laughs> I met her once. She had a beautiful wall <gasps> full of flowers. Stevie. Yes. You know who's part of the Marvel and Cinematic Universe? Uh, Captain America? Michelle Yao! Oh, yes, she is! <laughs> Ooh, wait Are we minute. about to acquisition Michelle Yao? Maybe we're about to text Michelle Yao Ooh. and help her with our plan to locate and secure a guest from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ooh. Because remember, I teased a guest. Yes. From, we have a very big guest, probably the biggest, the biggest person mm-hmm, that you mm-hmm. could, the most famousest mm-hmm. person that you could ever get from the Marvel Cinematic mm-hmm, Universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I'll just text Michelle Yao. I'll be like, yo, where, where, does this, where does this person live? Do you and Michelle Yao text a lot? Do I have, do I have, do I have to send Cloakie after Michelle Yao? Uh, no. I mean, we Zoom a lot. We don't text a lot. Oh. I've never texted Michelle. Yeah, I've I've zoomed her. She freezes mm. a lot. She gets on the screen, freezes, and you're like, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Then five minutes later, she unfreezes. I'm gonna assume she just takes a screenshot and says, "That's good enough." That sounds for like five minutes. that sounds like a Michelle Yao thing to do. It's a powerful move. That's why she's a powerful lady. She's the queen of the Winter Solstice, <laughs> she apparently. Is, she is. <laughs> sounds like some, some, somebody should make a comic book about that. The queen None of the, the Winter, Winter Solstice, Solstice, Michelle Yao. And then adapt it, starring Michelle Yao. Claire, one last question. Yes. Have you had to deal, how do you deal as a sorcerer supreme? I had a very difficult problem with this uh-huh. when I was a sorcerer supreme. Uh-huh. You as a sorcerer supreme, my wife, how do you deal with the dark magic? I... Anytime the dark magic creeps through, I go out into the world and I find my least favorite actors from holiday movies and I just shove them in the hole. This is very pop culture specific. And I block it so that the dark magic can't come through. Uh, can, may I take some guesses at some of those actors? Go for it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Is he in a Christmas movie? I don't know. Uh, Probably. Sure. He is. He's in one where he wears a sweater with uh, Anthony Mackie and Seth Rogen. 
Wow. I'm serious. So, I must have missed that oh, one. I don't know what this movie is, but it's like Joseph Gordon-Levitt wears a Christmas sweater, Seth Rogen wears a Hanukkah sweater, and Anthony oh, Mackie wears a Kwanzaa right. sweater. And they run around like a bachelor party on acid. I actually... Celebrating the holidays. Like all three of those. So I... And I think the gag is they have to celebrate all their holidays in like one night. Yes, that sounds right. What is... Th- I don't... I'm not even going to look it up. <laughs> I know listeners are scree... You know what? I'm not even going to say their name unless they bought ad time. Did they buy ad time? Tweet at GHS. Podcast. No, and you could tell that's uh, not Twitter. You could tell the host because Stevie and I don't care. I'll tell you who I have shoved in there recently, though, if you'd like Seth Rogen. Uh, no, we like Seth Rogen. Oh yes, he's good. Uh, Lindsay, he makes great pipes. Lindsay Lohan. Why? Who made her acting return on Netflix's Falling for Christmas Why? this year? Why are you hurting the little, little innocent? Lovely girl from Love Bug Unleashed. Uh, Because she's very bad in this movie. Why? She's such a sweet, innocent little girl. Absolutely. She doesn't travel the world. She doesn't do anything uncouth. No. She's never done anything. She does not own a club in Mykonos. She's never had an affair. No. 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 Uh, in imbibed substances. She is an innocent girl. She's just a friend of a talking car. Do you want to know who else is in there with her? In, In hell? No, the holding, plugging the hole to the dark dimension. Oh, uh, no. Who is? Justin Hartley for his performance in The Noel Diary from 2022, also on Netflix. Smallville's Green Arrow? Yes. The true Green Arrow, in my opinion. Don't let Ollie hear you say that. He, we all know that Justin Hartley is the greatest Green Arrow that ever lived. And I'm sad to say that Tom Hanks is also in there for the Polar Express. Tom Hanks? Mm-hmm. Mr. Rogers himself. No, Mr. Rogers is in the dark dimension. We went to his dinner party. Oh, that is correct. Fred is there. Mm-hmm. Mm. And Daniel and all the other horrible beasts to guard his menagerie. The little lamb, the king, mm-hmm. the trolley. Mm-hmm. The trolley came by my house the other day. The trolley takes us to town. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, it's very tiny and it always yells at us when we stand on top of it. But, mm-hmm. you know, it just, it just it's the easiest way to travel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have any other Christmas facts you want to throw away? <laughs> I'll tell you someone who's not in the hole. Who's not in the Christmas hole? Uh, perhaps actual Christmas icon. Perhaps okay. more correctly, Chris, more correctly, Queen of Christmas. I think she might actually believe in Christmas. She can't be the Queen of Christmas. We know that's Michelle Yao. Uh, Empress of Christmas. Oh, okay. That's the higher. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. Dolly Parton, by the way, is, um, you know, like Glinda the Good Witch? Yes. Dolly Parton is a good witch. Did you know this? Dolly Parton should play Glinda the Good That's Witch. That's why she looks so lovely, mm-hmm. even to this point, mm-hmm. and jokes about giving uh, uh, oral promiscuous activities to her husband on Twitter. <laughs> yes, she does. She is, uh, I believe what the children call, an icon. <laughs> she, as some would say, gives no Fs anymore. Uh, you know who else is in the hole? There's a lot of, how big is this hole? I mean, it's to the dark dim. It's a dimensional rift. Uh, oh, that's fair. That's fair. It's endless. Who else is in this hole? David Harbour for whatever movie he's in this year. Isn't he in that violent clause? Something like that. It's, or bloody Christmas? Yeah. Hellboy Santa Land? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I would go see that movie. Hell- Hellboy Santa Hellboy Santa Land. That's what we should pitch. Hellboy? Hellboy Santa Land. Shh, 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 shh. Don't give the listeners her ultimate prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I'm just... I'm so excited. It might have something to do with pitching. Any mm. other Christmas <laughs> tidbits you want to give us here before the, we go to commercial? The entire, we do have to pay the The bills. entire cast of 2012's A Christmas Story 2, which predates the current Christmas Story, available now on HBO Max, is in the hole. I didn't know there was a Christmas Story 2. Yeah, there's a Christmas Story Returns or something mm-hmm. like that. There's a Christmas Story 2? Mm-hmm. Tori Spelling is in there. Why? For time for you to come home for Christmas, available on Fubo TV. Did F- is Fubo about ads on this podcast? I mean, Stevie, I don't handle any finances. That's all Wong. Why is Wong handling our finances? He doesn't. Need- that's a question for you. That's true. Why did I give that to him? Mm, probably because I, 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 I saw an ad for a thing called Rocket Money, mm-hmm. and I just said that was gonna that. That's a good investment. Rockets mm-hmm. go to the moon. Mm-hmm. And and so I gave him Stevie, my- Stevie, you've gone to the moon. The blue area of the moon, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like a little fat baby that lives on the moon. He's called the Watcher. Mm-hmm. He, he looks, watches. He looks like a baby. Yeah, he's very open about his kink, and I appreciate that. That's true. He would do well in the dark dimension. 
He would do well in the Dark Dimension. You know who else would do well in the Dark Dimension? Uh, our commercials. Ooh, yes. I, yes, they are very Dark Dimension heavy. Yep. Uh, I think we're ready to take a break. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would suggest listening to some of those commercials. Help the Doctor Strange holiday special get out of this magical recession. And we'll be right back. <laughs> For 200 years, our country has shown great spirit. Whenever Americans have felt that things could be changed for the better, my employees at Texas Piggly Wiggly Grocery Store and Deli are all good examples of this. They're the price rebels of 76, and we've got a great new money sleeping spirit in all of our stores. It shows up everywhere. With that occasion and a strong desire to please you, the price rebels at Texas Piggly Wiggly Grocery Store and Deli are finding new ways of saving you money each and every day. In 1776, my friends, the Rebels were called the Minutemen. For a while, that kind of spirit got off track, but the Piggly Wiggly Rebels are bringing it back. Just like the Redcoats, inflation came, everybody said it's too tough to tame, and the Piggly Wiggly folks don't think that's right. They're Rebels, and they've just begun to fight. If you want to save money, you want to shop with the Price Rebels of Texas Piggly Wiggly Grocery Store and Deli, currently serving you at seven locations with a new eighth location opening up in Turkey, Texas. It's a real place. Look it up. I'm Tex Willerman, and I approve this message. Or I should say, this advertisement. And we're back. Welcome back to the Doctor Strange Holiday Special. Those were some fine commercials, weren't they, Clea? Which one was your favorite? Uh, the third one. Mm -hmm. uh, now it is time to bring in our special guest. As you've been listening to this show, we have, you know, we've had a rough year. The magical recession is fully on. Clea is very confused, I think, about Christmas. And we are going, our ultimate plan, to fix our entire lives, to fix this podcast, in fact, is we are going to magically portal our entire recording setup to the beautiful Burbank, California office of Kevin Feige. Uh, Miss Clear, would you, would you care to explain to our listeners if they do not know the dark wizard that is Kevin Feige? Who Ke is he? Kevin Feige is to Marvel Studios as Dormammu is to the Dark Dimension. Ooh. Well, what if someone doesn't know what the Dark Dimension is? How then I'm going to kill them. That's fair. I think that's very fair. If you <laughs> don't know you, what the dark dimension Steve. is, you deserve to die. All right. Are you ready, Clea? Yes. Actually, I think you should be. I should be the one asking you if you're ready because I am the Sorcerer Supreme right now. That is fair. I currently have no magical powers. <laughs> so don't I, try to mansplain <laughs> I'm Sorcerer sorry. Supreme I, to I, me, look. hubby. <sighs> <sighs> remember, remember. Ooh, close to heart attack. Okay, all right, all right, I got it in. I got it. In. I apologize. I did not mean to gas lamp you and uh, gas flame you, Clea. All right. Um, are, are your magical powers ready, Clea? They are. I was born ready. Okay. And here we are going to the office of Kevin Feige. Think Kevin Feige. In Burnbank, California. Yes. I got it. Burbank. Burnbank. Yes. Burbank, California. It's very lovely there. It's on fire. You know, you could only, your children could only go to school in Burbank, California if you actually live in Burbank, California. Like, you can't drop your kids off or at Burbank High School. Or if you work there. Is that, is that in the statue? Yes. Why are we talking about that? <laughs> Anyways, Clea, are you ready to, to transport into Kevin Feige? Stevie, again, are you ready to transport? I've done the breathing exercise. I believe I'm ready. <laughs> into Kevin Feige. Yes. Ready? Okay, we're going inside Kevin Feige. Three, two, one. Oh, look, and we're inside his office. Hello, Kevin. What in the Sam Wilson? Who are you two? There is not enough groveling going on considering I am the Sorcerer Supreme of this planet. The Sorcerer Supreme? Hold on. What, uh, one sec. Friday, do I have a meeting with Sorcerer Supreme today? Do you have your own AI? Is that possible in real life? I thought that was only a movie thing. You know, you mm. shouldn't generate that because they steal from artists. AI is bad. <laughs> that's funny but really who are you two well obviously uh we you know you make movies about us mr kevin feige i am the real doctor strange the former sorcerer supreme and concerned citizen and i'm clea and no i don't wear makeup inspired by euphoria thank you holy bucky barnes you're the characters in real life 
That is correct, sir. We actually exist. I only think that this must be like one of those crisis on infinite earths things where- uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, Stevie, Stevie, what? Stevie, baby, 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 wrong brand. Oh, this is one of those uh, valiant blood wars things. Yeah, you got where, it. Where, where somebody is like, we actually exist, but they have been incepting our adventures into your comic books and movies for years. And I'm telling you here, Mr. Kevin, sir, uh, we want our piece of the pie, as some would say. Yeah, and we want to make sure that in the Doctor Strange movies that uh, the actor does the right accent. Okay, okay, okay. So we're going to have to get some lawyers in the meeting, or what is this about? Is this about legality? Are you worried about uh, uh, well, uh, um, uh, character uh, assassination? What, 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 what exactly are you bringing to me here? Well, Kevin, may I call you Kevin? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Kevin, baby. <laughs> baby kids. No, okay. Hmm? Well, let's rewind back to... We're not we friends? Stay with, what, let me know what you're bringing to the table first, and then okay. we can decide. Well, you know, I don't know if you've looked outside, but there is a magical recession on. It's rough out there, mm -hmm. Kevin, baby. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we, we, Kevin, baby, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And we, we just thought, you know, maybe, you know, to help lift everyone's spirits and to lift our magical checkbooks, that maybe we could pitch you a couple Marvel one-hour specials. You know, those little things that have been on Disney Plus, like Werewolf by Night. I like that it has killing in it. It was really good. And it had lots of black and white. And we thought we could pitch you one because they could make you money. could make us money. And if you don't listen to us, I'll turn your skin inside out. Well, let's not get too hasty there, Cleo. But, you know, you know, yeah, we probably will kill you. So you're here with a pitch. Uh, of course. <laughs> okay, Multiple okay, okay. pitches? Uh, we, uh, we, we, have, we have two. Um, I've also prepared a 15-page treatment, if you're interested with that. Well, why in the Peggy Carter didn't you say so? Friday, cancel my screening of Kate and Leopold. We can do that later. Please, you two, take a seat. Take a seat. Oh, thank you. Ooh, oh. this chair's really comfy. Uh, well, I see this thing on your... May I ask you about your objects on your shelf behind your desk there? Uh, you can ask about one. Oh, okay. Uh, there's one on there. It's yellow and blue... And it has some spikes on it. Looks like it might be something that a crazy animal claws might wear. What is that? Oh, that right there. Uh, that is the um, that's the uh, well, what we're trying to repurpose sort of like a blue beetle situation um, and see how we can kind of like stave that off. So can you can you say that word? Is that legal? Uh, we can say it as long as we don't put it in print. Oh, OK, got it. Got it. I mean, I think pretty soon you probably will end up owning Warner Brothers the way things are going anyway. <laughs> you keep talking like that, pal. I'm going to put my finger over the security button. How about you, Cleo? Would you like to ask any questions about any of the objects in the room? Oh, uh, so on the back uh, of the shelf, it looks like it's kind of hiding away. It's bright pink, and it appears to be pulsing with a superior intelligence. Oh, what a fantastic question. What a fantastic question. Yeah, we're also trying to get Superman as well um, and see if we can kind of fold in, in, any of that in, so... Um, that's kind of a, a, a prototype we're working on there, but, uh, well, thank you. So, so you, you two were talking about pitches you have. Yes, we have pitches. Yeah. Yes. I want to go first. Of course. Ladies first. Okay. So I know that you just released the guardians of the galaxy holiday special. So this mm -hmm. is kind of in mind with that. I'm, I'm not saying it's like guardians of the galaxy holiday special too, but it's just, it's kind of the same. Okay. So close your eyes. I can astral project this right into your brain. I am the sorcerer supreme. Are we have all oh. closed our eyes? Okay, and is this patented technology you're using, or is this kind of like an open thing that we might be able to look into developing I, into Disney Plus? I'm pretty certain you can buy it. It's very open source. Okay, I, we right. found it on Tor. Okay. Oh, oh, well. Okay, uh, Friday. Look into Tor. Okay. Uh, my eyes are closed. Okay. So, imagine if you will, uh, those little brats that belong to the Scarlet Witch. So. One of them, the good one, Billy, he's like maybe eight years old and he's played by some cute child star. His family, because they're all back and they're all alive and everything's OK again, because this is Marvel and we get everything that we want. They're going on a trip to Paris and his mom, the Scarlet Witch, is so busy the morning that they're going to Paris. And it's like really close to Christmas. But she kind of like forgets about him because he fell asleep in the 
attic. And then the whole WandaVision family, including the less interesting brother, Tommy, they leave for the airport and they leave Billy behind. And Billy wakes up in an empty house. And because he was so mad at the WandaVision family the day before, he had hoped and he had made a wish that his family would disappear. And he thinks it's come true. But then two deeply evil S.H.I.E.L.D. agents come in to rob the house because they're there to keep the Scarlet Witch down because they can't let a woman have nice things. And so all of his powers manifest and he has to fight them off. And there's maybe just like a teeny tiny bit of murder. What do you think? Okay, okay. Yeah, this reminds me of a couple other movies. Um, Some of the subplots in Love Actually. I think it's a very good holiday spin. Mm -hmm, Um, mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I do have a question. We are yes. looking. Uh, what was that, uh, Doctor Strange? Uh, I, I, I just, I just love your notes, Kevin. I, baby, you're impressing me. I'm just okay. Uh, uh, Can we go skiing sometime? I, I don't ski. I get other people to ski for me. Oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll watch them with you. Uh, in that case, yeah, that is my favorite sport. Is <laughs> okay. um, spectator I'll, skiing. I'll, I'll have my people call your people, and by my people, I mean I will just call your secretary. Okay, that sounds great. Friday, make sure to screen my calls. So what I'm wondering is we're looking to kind of build out the environment of Disney Plus. So Mm -hmm. Clea, is there any room here for a marriage between your story and Nat Geo? I don't know what that is. National Geographic! Because I come from the dark dimension and I've only been living on Earth for like a year. I forget and, that okay, sometimes. Okay. So Freddy, I'm, um, I'm get gonna... On the, get on the phone with marketing about Nat Geo. We gotta, we gotta get the word out. Yeah, you're not, you're not making it into the dark dimension there, Kevin, on mm-hmm. that one. But mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm gonna say yes because I really believe in this idea and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, I'm gonna say maybe sharks? maybe sharks okay Mm -hmm. some maybe sharks that's Mm -hmm. interesting that's interesting that would be a good okay and maybe halfway through the sharks could change color yes and we can play that deeply annoying song that children love that's like maybe sharks do 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 maybe sharks careful copyright that's not a bad idea that's not a bad idea we could play that on avengers campus in the park okay okay that's a wonderful pitch and 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 if you could describe sort of this uh this special in three words or less how would you describe it I would describe it as bloody, vicious, and violent. Mm, that is very holidays. It is very holidays. What? Um. Uh, uh, and I hesitate to ask the obvious question, but what um sort of uh, holiday inspirations did you draw from for this? So, like I mentioned, I have only lived on Earth for a year, and in the dark mm-hmm. dimension, our media landscape is a little bit different. Um, dare I say, more diversified, not so Euro ethnic centric as it is here. Okay, it's mainly okay. demons. It's a lot of like non human on demons. on the. This is the six one six, right, baby? I think so. It's here in the six one six. Yeah, we're in the six one six. So it depends. I don't know if you know, Kevin. I, 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 you, you, you've been throwing about a lot of numbers recently about like which Marvel universes, which Marvel. I don't. I think you're a little confused. I'm sorry, Kevin. I it's love to you, keep Kevin, our baby. enemies. Uh, it's to keep our enemies off our trail. But yeah, oh, for I, all intents and purposes, we're six one six. Yeah. Yeah, that's very smart, very smart. Uh, I'm sorry, continue, uh, Clea. So, over the last year, because Stevie loves the holidays, I have been watching a lot of holiday movies to try and mm-hmm. have a better understanding of what Christmas is, because our first Christmas together, as listeners may remember, mm-hmm. I tried to uh, get Stevie and my daddy uh, like a sawed-off goat's head and oh. parts of a demon. Uh-huh. And I guess... That's not not what Christmas is, depending on what tradition you're drawing from. But here it's much more materialistic. So I have been watching Love Actually and the six different types of the Grinches, including the one with that actor who plays Stevie but does the wrong accent. And there are six Grinches now? I think there's four. <laughs> We've got to look into that problem. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kevin. That's a little insider. Does Marvel own the Grinch? Does Marvel own the Grinch? Can I pitch on the Grinch? Uh, buy the Grinch. We do now. Oh, wow, it's that quick. Okay, I'll work on it. I'll pitch it before the we leave. The power of Kevin Feige. So okay, great. Well, Clea, I like this pitch a lot. Um, dropping a child off in the woods and a documentary following their survival um, as they're being mm-hmm. hunted by holiday spirits. Okay, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. Mm. I feel uh, so good about this. Uh, yeah, Kevin, baby, okay. mm-hmm. uh, can, I, can I give you my pitch, Kevin? Please, by all means. All right. Imagine... A world long ago. Now forget that, because we're 36 years in the future. Okay. 
in the future, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange mm-hmm. is still riding dragons. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he he's not been taking any promotions up in the magical ranks of the Sorcerer Supreme Dragon Riding Competitions. Uh-huh. And Clea runs a beach somewhere, probably north of San Diego, mm-hmm. around okay. the camp. You know, it's, I'm just pulling a name out of my head. Let's call it Camp Dedleton. Okay. And we have a son. Mm-hmm. But, Ooh, we have a son. But we're estranged from our son. Oh. Mm. And let's call him, you know, I don't know, a bird-like name, Cockatrice. Now, Cockatrice, okay. Cockatrice Strange mm-hmm. has not spoken to me, his father, in years. Okay. But in those years, he has begun of, he's become a hell of a dragon rider. Mm-hmm. And he has also grown a very excellent mustache. Mm-hmm. So, Cockatrice Strange, he comes under my command in the dragon riders. Uh-huh. And I have to teach my own son, Cockatrice Strange, how to ride through a perilous canyon somewhere in Russia to stop evil wizards from making any potential and dangerous spells laced with plutonium. And to learn this mission, we play volleyball on the beach. Mm-hmm. We sing great balls of fire around a piano. Mm-hmm. There's probably a supporting role that we can scoop John Hamm in so we can get another awards nomination in there somewhere. Um, okay. But- but yeah, but after the John Hamm scene, mm-hmm. me and Cockatrice, we succeed in the mission. But as we're racing out, we both crash land in Russia and our dragons are dead. But inside a barn mm-hmm. next to an airfield, uh-huh. we find a don't 1986, oh, okay. a 1986 uh-huh. dragon, yeah, an okay. old dragon, just okay. like Strange. Mm-hmm. And he flies us to freedom. And we return to the US, heroes. I pick up Clea from the beach bar mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we ride off into the sunset on our 1986 dragon, leaving the audience to assume that we're going to get remarried as Hold My Hand Lady Gaga plays. And I have the perfect title. I have never heard this title used anywhere else. We're going uh-huh. to call it Dr. Strange Maverick. Dr. Strange Maverick. Okay. Yeah. Now there's a lot of amusement park attraction opportunities here. Ooh, um, I'm glad you see them. That are interesting. That are interesting. I'm seeing uh, sort of like a dragon riding um, roller coaster that we could sell to Great America. The question I have for you, Stephen, uh, mm-hmm. in regards to this is, and I don't mean to stress you out in any way. Okay. But we cannot say the name of the enemy <clears throat> at all. <clears throat> In the film. Oh. Is there a word? Is there an association that we can use instead of uh, any specific geographical location that you can swap out? This is so much pressure. Yes, this, this is really, I don't, I was not prepared for notes, Kevin, baby. I'm sorry. I got to do some breathing exercises. We're going to need an answer. We're going to need an answer. Um, this is Hollywood. This is, we're going to need an answer. You're going to need to collect yourself and give an answer here. I've only got a couple more seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, scarecrows. Scarecrows is good. Scarecrows is good. Okay. okay. All right, Up God. against the scarecrows. All right, all right, all okay. right. Does now, a work? question. Um, we, again, our first and foremost focus right now is to marry all the units of Disney Plus together. Oh, is like there it. any room for an ESPN Plus situation here? I think so. Yeah. I think Dragon Volleyball. We'll have a Dragon Volleyball game in the movie, and mm-hmm. then you will start a Dragon Volleyball League. I will loan you some dragons from the Dark Dimension. We will make this a thing. Okay, hold on. Actually, one second. Uh, cover, both of you cover yours. Friday, it sounds like we might get some free dragons out of this, um, which will be great. Um, and uh, maybe we can get some, if we get a Snapple sponsorship in on that, we can get some Snapple Dragon things going. I, I think this will make some really great tank tops that we might be able to also sell. Um, oh, you're back. Okay, great. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tank yeah. tops, yes. Uncover your ears. Yeah, I, I'm seeing a lot of the merch ideas here. That's very interesting. Mm. That's very interesting. How did you uh, hear this, Clea? I'm very uh, strategically minded when it comes to merchandise. What's going to be on the tank tops? Ooh, what is going to be on the tank tops, Kevin, baby? Oh, that's going to be a, that's absolutely going to be a dragon um, smacking down a volleyball. Oh, mm. I would buy yeah. that. Can I buy five of those shirts right now? Uh, yeah, you absolutely can. We're printing Friday. Them, yeah. Purchase five shirts for Doctor Strange. Friday, disregard any commands that don't come directly from me. Uh, now, the thing is, I am in a bit of a bind. Okay. Um, the magic recession has hit all of us. Oh, um, that's too bad. Bottom to top. 
uh, we are also affected, and I don't want you to think that we're not. So currently, we don't seem to have the budget for either of those projects. So I cannot greenlight them at the time. I will oh. say these are good ideas. Oh, I'm just getting stressful over here. It's okay. What I would, are you okay? Are you are you okay? Do you need a tea or something? You're looking stressed. All right. Uh, I need you no, back I, with me. Okay, I'm back. I need you back with me in a couple seconds. I mean, All right. know, I'm back. I'm back. Umar's breathing exercises brought me back. I would like to keep you both involved. Ooh. I like on the next project we're working on, and I'd like to run something by you to see what involvement or what creative input you could possibly give for us. I'm ready to be a consultant. Sign me up, Kevin, baby. Can we fly to Aspen first, spend a couple of days thinking about this, and then you make the pitch? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then can we run a THR article that everybody's going to blow out of proportion and clarify that on our Twitter account? Yes, and then we could fire Patty Jenkins even when we didn't hire her. Yeah. We can and have done all of those. Oh, um, we can also have Aspen flown to us. Um, <gasps> and that is within the budget. Unfortunately, just the two projects that you're talking about are not. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I understand. So if you both are interested in sort of what we're putting on the table, then maybe we can figure out some uh, Aspen and THR drama that we could possibly float out there. What are you putting on the table? A turkey? We are not putting a turkey out on the table. Instead, Damn. we are looking to, again, marry all of the entities on Disney+, Plus, combine it into a larger Disney+, Plus ecosystem. So, here's the pitch for you, in a nutshell. The Muppets take Manhattan. The mm-hmm. Avengers have to take back Manhattan. What do you think? Yes. I'm just going to say yes, and Miss uh-huh. Piggy karate chops every single Avengers. She saves the day. Oh. Ultimately, she marries, I'm going to say, Sam Wilson, Captain oh. America. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And we finally get the vindication that she deserves as a feminist icon. Okay. Steven, what, what, are, you, what, what, what are you thinking? What's, uh, what's cooking in that cauldron over there? Will the Muppets be safe around dragons? Because I, I, I'm sorry. I have to. I have Is to Uncle in- Deadly not a dragon? Uh, he is a dragon, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. We we have to include dragons in this. I'm sorry, uh, Kevin, baby. Mm-hmm. It's been a, it's been a rough year, and I mm-hmm. kind of promised the dragons a Hollywood movie deal. So the dragons have to be involved. Is that a deal breaker? They were very taken with House of they, the Dragon, and we're trying to we're just trying to look after our babies and give them. They something do nice. work for free, but they 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 will constantly threaten you with death. Oh, that's hey, that's <laughs> trust me. Is that Hollywood, that. baby? That's is Hollywood, that just, baby. That's normal Hollywood. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, okay, okay. You know what? You both drive a very hard bargain, but I really like the creativity, the panache, the drive that you both have. I'm very interested and enthralled by these ideas, and I love your passion, and your creativity. It's something we look for here. Mm-hmm. We're looking for creative voices that bring their own unique takes on these franchises and these stories that have inspired generation after generation. So I would like to offer you both oh, a seat at the table oh, okay, as cool. well as associate producer credits. Ooh, what does that entail? Like what's what, like, what is it? What is the what job? Does a producer do? Yes, exactly. Explain this. <laughs> no, one under, no one in Hollywood understands this. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A producer is someone who sort of oversees the functioning aspects of the creative process. Make sure that a story is told. Make sure that the lights are on. Make sure that the proper crew is hired. The producer is the beating heart and the breathing lungs behind a production. An associate producer is someone who gives us free dragons. Mm. Mm. I thought those were consulting producers. No, con- no, consulting producers do come with a fee. Um, which is, again, a little bit outside of our budget. And, and we can't be the consulting producers? Unfortunately, that's outside of our budget. There's, there's not mm. a budget for it. Well, yeah. You drive a hard bargain, Kevin, but to be on clear, look, uh, Kevin, do you mind if I sidebar with my partner here? No, of course, of course. Uh, Friday, yes. um, uh, cover my ears. Yeah, put, Friday, put him in one of those get smart, no sound bubbles. Thank you, Friday. Uh, clear, baby. Yes, Steve. What do you think? Uh, you know, I, I really, I, I, I had my heart set on consulting producer. Look, we, we need this. Yes. So, and we promised ourselves that we wouldn't leave here empty handed. I also, I, I fair, just full honesty here, Clea. I can't afford the heart pills of uh, Moonapur anymore. Um, so like, we've got to do something. I think we have to take this. I, Stevie, I also think we can still go back to the original idea of killing Kevin Feige and just, 
animating his corpse. Yeah, I mean, but, you've done it very well before. Oh, I have done it before mm-hmm. in one of his movies, in mm-hmm. fact. All right, uh, Kevin, mm-hmm. uh, I think we're going to take it. Yeah, you agree? Yes, Kevin, baby, we agree. Uh, we will um, tell us where your lawyers live because we're going to portal over there immediately after this. Um, and, you know, just to ensure that the deal goes smoothly and, and that it's real. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you don't have to worry about where my lawyers live. <laughs> you already know. The Dark Dimension? Uh, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's where all lawyers live, Steve. Right? You know this. As soon as you get your bar degree, you go right to the Dark Dimension. Mm-hmm. A portal opens up, sucks I'm you positive, in. I'm positive you've rubbed shoulders with them before, Clea. Uh, they well, probably came to our parties. Holy Sandra Bullock, I'm so glad that you both are involved. This is wonderful. We love fresh voices. And uh, you two, the fact that you've been part of, technically you've been part of the family from the get-go, considering the characters are yours that we are, uh, you know, representing and filming on screen. I mean, we could have, we could have, I mean, if we had just been a little bit smarter about this, Clea, I mean, we could have sued for life rights from Marvel (laughs) Studios. But, you know, I'm glad it didn't have to come to that. But you also know that life rights are notoriously difficult to protect in copyright. That's right. Uh, For public figures. Well, Kevin, I'm, I'm, thank you so much. It's so lovely to meet you and look at your weird objects in the wall and talk to Friday. And and I can't believe that you just wear the baseball cap even inside. And no pants. Yeah. No, no pants no, ever. No, no. Baseball cap. I mean, you, then... you you do know the nickname. It's it's No Pants Feige. It's No Pants Feige. I thought yeah. it was a rumor. It's true. And anytime someone says they're going to sue the pants off me, I laugh and I go, beat you to the beat you to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, sir, think I, I just want to wish you Kevin, baby, my good friend, Kevin, baby, who was <sighs> we're going to watch skiers at Aspen very soon. Uh I just want to wish happy holidays to you, sir. And happy holidays to everyone listening. Happy yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that's good. Thank uh, uh, you. Clea, do you have a, a, a holiday message that you've absorbed over the last year from all your pop culture media? I would say that most importantly, when the ghosts come to visit you, you should kill them first because they're just as corrupt as you are. But they're ghosts. How do you kill a ghost? Baby, we lived in the dark dimension for years. I know, but I'm still a human. I don't understand your concepts completely. Well, they just enter into a darker, deeper dimension of torture. I don't know if you've seen any of the Marvel Studios Doctor Strange movies, but basically all the time I just wing it. I mean, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I basically we'll just to, wing we'll it. Have to let our screenwriters know. Uh, yes. To that. Yeah. Oh, you're already doing it. Did you not see that Spider-Man movie where I willingly like mind wiped the entire world, the existence of Spider-Man? It was oh, a very yeah. clear move. I was very proud I was of you. surprised because I've actually done that before, Kevin. It shocked me that you guys knew that. Can I be honest with you really quickly? Mm-hmm. That wasn't in the script. That We also didn't film that. Oh. Yeah. You just took that from my life? Well, it was just we showed it to the premiere and the footage was somehow different. It was very odd. And mm. none of us could really recall um, what we had done at that uh, time. I guess so I, anyway, I guess, one of, my, little, eh, I guess yeah. one of my spells just escaped out there. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Kevin, real quick, maybe our listeners would love to hear this. Do you have a holiday message that you tell your Marvel Studios employees every single year? Maybe they, uh, I think our listeners would love to hear that as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would say um, um, with great pa- with great power comes great holidays. Hmm. Brevity is the soul of something. <laughs> I'm we, working on Shakespeare now. Do we all have to have a holiday phrase. Uh, okay. Uh, refrigerators are often full when the laughter has stopped. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. <laughs> Well, That's from a holiday movie. Uh, sure, I bet it is. Uh, uh, I agree. What was that again, Clea? You... Buzz your girlfriend woof. Buzz your, buzz your girlfriend woof indeed, Kevin, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, Friday, see if we can buy that phrase. That's pretty good. That would look really good on a cap. Well, I just have to say, you know, I appreciate the holiday magic because it's what brought us three together. So, you know, there's that. Yes, we'll, uh, we'll be celebrating lots of it in Aspen. Well, everyone out there, it's, it, this has been an excellent happy ending here. We, we made a new best friend that we're going to watch skiing mm, with. Okay. I've mm-hmm. learned about an AI that I might have a thruple with in Clea. Oh, it's going to be mm-hmm. great Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday, make a calendar date for a double date with Clea and Doctor Strange for next Tuesday. I have it open. <laughs> no, Friday's on lunch. She actually can do whatever she wants. Okay. Oh, damn. That's in Anyways, the now. Uh, well, it's in there and it's going to happen, Kevin. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Kevin, for your wit and your hats and, uh, letting us gaze at your pasty white thighs. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would you like to uh, kick it to our commercial break that everyone should listen to because it will be full of characters that they might recognize? Absolutely. Stay tuned uh, f- uh, to this message from our sponsor, who uh, is keeping the lights on, keeping things going. They're the beating heart and the breathing lungs of uh, this operation. Do your BAMPs actually taste like sulfur? For me, yes. For those who are standing around me, depending on how close we are. Hi, I'm Texas oil magnate and owner of soon-to-be seven Piggly Wigglies, Tex Willerman. Yeah! And this is Tex Men, a new podcast from Sunnyside, Texas. Google it. It's a real town. We take a closer look on this podcast at the history and science of the X-Men with my best friend and eternal soulmate, Kurt Wagner, the incredible Nightcrawler. Kurt, there's a question I've always wanted to ask you. Yeah. What's it like to bone a mutant? Vich mutant. Uh, the spiky ones. Sexy. Oh. You see, test men... That's right. Tex Men is for the curious people who want to know everything about our merry mutant friends. In our first episode, we'll check the evolution of mutants on film, familiar all the way from the past to the modern day. And on the next episode, we'll discover how the X Men react to different types of celebrity horses. Kurt, do you believe that horses can act? I don't believe that you can act. Oh, well, I'm not a horse. And I accidentally believe that horses like Trigger, Roy Rogers' beautiful horse, one of the most famous horses in television and film history can act. I also think that horse Brad Pitt can act. He's a beautiful horse too. How'd you get the horse on a bullet train? Uh, very carefully by squeezing it with jelly. Mm. Now, Tex Men, our podcast, is an eclectic and erratic podcast. We're going to be releasing fun, fascinating episodes randomly throughout 2023. And I mean that sincerely. Randomly. You're never going to be able to predict one of these episodes. In fact, one of these episodes may never release. That's right. Don't ask anybody for it. So don't (laughs) miss your chance to learn something you never knew that you needed to know about, that you definitely do need to know about, that you never needed to learn about the X-Men movies. Subscribe to Texmen on Zoom, MySpace, and one of those tin cans with a string attached. Uh, Kurt, what do you think about the name of our new podcast, Texman? I'm a little bit confused by the name because you were not on the X-Men. Yeah, but I'm on the Texman, not the Taxman, the Texman. Uh, Tex, may I ask a question? You can ask anything you want, girl, buddy. I almost called you girly, buddy. You are kind of girly, actually, but you're a good buddy, too. I am uh, delicate and fine-boned. You, you, I, I mean more, like, you have a lot of curls. You kind of have long hair. Mm. You kind of have long curly hair. If you had your own uh, group of mutants called the Texman, Ooh, yes, who would be the six on your team? I only get six? Only six. Okay. I don't right. know how many are usually on the team. There are so many teams. Usually super. I've been on like 15. It's like the seven soldiers. It's usually okay. seven. No, no. I'm on. You said six. <laughs> you could have seven. No. We're going for six. Okay. Okay. Going for six. Me. Oh, man. You put me on the spot with this one, too. I did. Okay. Uh, this is your podcast. It is my podcast. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Texman. All right. If I get to build a team of Mary Mutants, I am going to put a uh, beast on there. Hank McCoy. I have to admit, I'm a little bit insulted that I was not your number one choice. We'll get there, Kurt. We'll get <laughs> I there. am devastated. I'm going to put Beast on there. Okay. Because he's a big furry blue boy. He's a doctor. Yep. Yep. I'm going to put Cyclops on there. Yeah. Because he's a, a tall. He wears blue. I see the muscu- same blue on blue on blue. Muscular bluey boy. Musky blue boy. Yep. I'm going to put uh, the tick. <laughs> On there, he's not an X Man. He, he's. I can do whatever I want. The tick, the big blue boy tick, is going to go on there. Which tick? Pat uh, Serafinovich. No, or? Patrick Warburton. Okay, he's the sexiest of ticks. True. I think that's a true statement. True. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would defy you to tell me another tick am, that's sexier I am than not. Patrick Warburton. I am agree. All right, cool. Uh, uh, little boy blue is going to be on there. You are you are missing a very obvious blue mutant. Little boy blue is going to go on there. Is it one from Fables? Yes, and, and from you know classical art, fairy tales, <laughs> Ch- children's fairy tales. Little boy blue, little boy blue, uh, 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 blue from Blue's Clues. The dog? Yes. Yeah. Not Steve. No, that dog has superpowers. It can read. Also, it would just make the team happy. Again, you're missing a very obvious blue and make the mutant, team happy. Who's not even um, me? I'm actually going to take your seven. I'm going to add. I'm going to do a while. I'm going to do a. Okay. Uh, uh, 
uh, Nightcrawler, you, Kurt Wagner. You're still missing another My furry tent. good friend. Yes. You're going to be my, well, is that five or six? I don't know. I don't know either. We'll I'm say just, five. I'm just going to say I got one more. Okay. And my final choice on my Texmen, because of course I'm like yeah. Professor X, so I yes. don't count, right? Final member, Grover from Sesame Street. You're not going to put my mother on the team. She's the most iconic blue mutant of all time. She's a bad guy. Uh, uh, Not according to the current continuity. And she's now married to a lady. I don't keep it. Oh, that might be interesting. Yeah. She's the swing. She's the wild card. Only if she brings her. Auxiliary member. Only if she brings her wife. And her skull belt. Of course you got to have a skull. I have a skull in my belt. It's on my belt buckle. Yeah, but it's a, Look at it, Kurt. It's a, Look a at cow it. skull. You looking at it? Yes. All right, describe it to the audience. It's a cow skull. Yeah. It, some, it's an actual cow skull. Some, it weighs like 20 pounds. It's like three feet wide. Sometimes, Huge. Sometimes it's difficult to get indoors. You stab yourself if you cross too close to him. I can't tell you how many employee lawsuits I've had to feel because of this belt buckle, but my daddy gave it to me. Did your Does your wife ever run into it? Judy? Is All that, the time. Is that her name? I, you know, I, I've had two wives at this point, <laughs> and it's very difficult to remember the names, especially since the first one was called Julie, and this one's called Judy. Are they related? No. Okay. That'd just be weird. It would be. That'd be very It'd strange. Be super weird. Uh, so this is just kind, kind of the stuff you can hear on Texman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quality podcasting. And uh, if you would like to hear maybe a future episode, never, all I would say <laughs> is is that uh, I believe there's a sat called Twitter. Not Twitter. Don't go to Twitter, kids. That's going to scare you. Swatter. Go to Twitter and uh, go uh, use the hashtag, hashtag TexMenYes. You know, and maybe you'll hear a future episode randomly or never. Or never. Probably never. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe in the month of April, but probably never. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, Kurt. Can can I? What would be? You're the. You've been the leader of X Men team. Yes, a bunch of them. You know, I liked you the best when you were the leader of Excalibur. That was mm-hmm. that's my favorite. With version. my swords and your cool costume. You had like a dungaree mm-hmm. and you had a goatee. Mm-hmm. Um, who would be if you could pick anybody? Who would you put on? You can only get six members or seven. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> who would you put on your team, Kurt? Kitty. Kitty who? Like a cat? Kitty Pride. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Kitty Pride. Uh, I don't know all your pals. I haven't met them all. And and she she's kind of like a, a, a bonus because she comes with Lockheed. So that's what's a, a Lockheed? It's a dragon. Like, oh, it's not a it's not a jetliner? No, it's a well maybe. It's not an aircraft it's a carrier. Dragon. So that's a tufa. It's not a company that builds plutonium weapons for the government? You know, Lockheed Martin. Maybe they will be destroyed by me. Who knows? Okay, so you get you get okay, so you get a dragon, a kitty pride, and this lady kitty, and the dragon. Okay, I will take. Um, oh boy, I cannot remember his name. <laughs> Says I don't know who you're talking about. Can't help you out. Uh, who is Storm's, Storm's husband? Black Panther. No, the good one. The one who make machines. Forge. Forge. Uh, thank you. The Native American X-Men. Yeah, character. this uh, mechanical leg. Yes. We will take Forge. Okay. Uh, we will take... If I take, like, Cyclops, can I just get the whole couple, the whole trouble? Can I get him no, and, and you, Jean and no, Logan you, you for the cannot, price of you one? You cannot cheat. The, it's the, not cheating. The, it's polyamory. You cannot cheat the first Texman draft by pulling in a couple. Thruple. Because then that means my team doubles automatically. Because if you're on the Texman, it means I'm on the Texman too, not just the so, Professor X. Okay, so I take Logan. He's my best friend. Okay, besides so, you. Okay. I'm, I'm but not, like a lower tier best friend. I'm not a big friend. fan of Logan. Um, he smells. I take Cardinal, my child from the future. Oh, I don't know who that is. You got a kid? Yeah, from a Hawksbox. Hawksbox? What's Hawksbox? Is that a sp- is that a pandemic? Is that a new pandemic I haven't he, heard about? Kind of. Hawksbox? He's the red one who looks like me. Is that like uh, a thing where, you know, everybody's got like... It's like, a thing where there's too many words on the page for a comic book. No, is that like... But a, Tom Muller's a good designer, so it's okay. Is that like a thing where there's like vines everywhere and our technology yeah, ran through Krakow, plants? Yeah, which is where I live. Is that what the Hawksbox is? I live inside a giant church there. Yeah, okay. I've only been there once. I have no idea. I think there's four people on my team. Yes, four. Uh, I will take um, Colossus because he's married to Kitty, so that's, that's just a polite thing to do. That's that big Russian farmer guy, right? Yep, Piata. I liked him when he wore Piotr. a do-rag. He, he wore a, de- a do-rag around his head. Remember that? So that seems an unfortunate choice for a white guy. He's Russian. It's fine. I guess. 
Yeah. They do whatever they want. Have you been reading the news? Uh, no, I live on Krakoa. You know, I think I think we might have some Russian listeners of Texmen, so I just want to... If you are Russian, let us know. Hashtag Texmen, yes. <laughs> I will take um, dupe. Dupe. That sound, oh, that sounds uncouth. What's that? He's a green floaty guy. He's a green floaty guy. He talks... Is he like a dog? No, he's like a mutant. Yeah, but, Duh. so he's a human? Yeah. All legs? mutants are human. This dupe has legs? No, he does not have legs. He's a floaty guy. What does he, he looks look like? like what does he look like? Slimer a little oh, bit. Oh, I like Slimer. So he's like a Slimer of the X-Men. I'm in for this guy. Yeah. I'm going to add him to my team. And lastly, I will take... Hmm, this is hard. Can I take can I take you back a step? Sure. This dupe fella. <laughs> Do you think he would be I take that X-Men that's just a tree. I take him. What X-Men that's a tree? There's an X-Men who's just a tree. What? Like Groot? He like no, it's a tree with roots who walks through the hallway. Yeah, Groot. He's not Groot. Yeah, but he looks like he's a copy of Groot. No, though. he's not. Sure? He does not have legs. I'm pretty certain he's a copy of Groot. He's not a copy of Anyways. Uh, I think he's a Grant Morrison adventure. Uh, let's let's So take, let's those take, are my teams. Let's take a what would you name your team? Uh, I would name my team Hell, X-Men colon Hell, because in German, Hell, H-E-L, means bright. So X-Men bright? X-Men Hell. X-Men, we're going to give you a sunburn? X-Men Hell. Like light, like light bring us. You know, I'm sort of religious, so light. You are religious. Bright. All right. You, you know? know what I call my team? Texman. <laughs> well, yeah. But <laughs> Texman w- calling Bigly Wigglies and Titties or something like that. <laughs> titties or something like yeah, that? You have like what a- do you think of my business model, Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Bigly Wigglies? Yeah. Or the Titties? <laughs> well, I have a, you have a titty bar, I think. I'm pretty We've certain. I, no, I did a festival where there was oh, a titty bar. So <laughs> there was a festival. I think Julie or Judy or whoever's a Judy, phone. Judy, damn it. She a, sends you a sweater every single year. I, Get her name right. I think she's a very progressive forward thinking lady she is it was her idea yes she's the star of the show no i would call mine the texas titanic texas tour of show of tip top top notch texman i will never remember t t t t t t t t t <laughs> yeah it's the easiest to remember yes uh, but can i take it back i still want to take it back to that dupe fella <laughs> do you think if i paid that dupe fella the right price mm-hmm. that he would float around in uh various locations of my texas piggly wiggly grocery store a deli for money Cause I think the do chill- you just want him around for floating? Like you don't, he doesn't have to stock shelves. I want him to be, you know, like uh, the Harrah's in London, the most <laughs> famous grocery store of all time. Yeah, owned by uh, Dodi Fayette. That's right. All right. Well, Muhammad. Uh, Text watched the Crown. <laughs> I did. Mumu, he owns it. I enjoyed season five. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> Tex is a. I know that is that may that may be stupid. Okay, Tex on the spot. Yellowstone owns the Crown. Oh, it's difficult. Mm. Okay, so we okay we got the we got Kevin Costner. We got two completely violent and oh. uh, oppressive white people family. <laughs> Kevin Costner <laughs> versus the wonderful Jonathan Pratt in a fist fight. Tough call. Well, Jonathan Pratt is going to fight dirty. He's he's, all, he's, he's also very old because he's a James Bond villain. <laughs> it's true. But Kevin Costner is Paul Kent. Yeah. And his punches make you see the American flag every time he touches you. Yeah, he, or he veers the base about that. He does. He's an expert. He's been a pitcher. <laughs> he's been a pitcher, a catcher, and an outfielder. Wow, he's a uh, he's verse. And a golf champion. Sure. Oh, I think that, And Robin Hood. I think Kevin Costner wins. But actually of the choices between Yellowstone and The Crown, I think I'm going to have to say X-Files. You know they have the same amount of seasons. I think I'm going to have to go with X-Files. X-Files? Okay. Yeah, X-Files. Do you believe? Or do you want to believe? Trust no one, Ashley. Okay. Only the X-Files people are going to get that joke. I am not Ashley, <laughs> by the way. I oh, am hell! Kurt Wagner, the incredible nightcrawler. Ich bin Kurt Wagner. <laughs> do I, does Tex have to do some editing on the first episode of the Tex Men? No, but I think Tex is about to be canceled. Oh, okay. You this know, is why the show will never air. Yep, randomly. 
Randomly. Also, I think it's taken me this long to settle into the accent. You know, I think I called you Ashley because that's actually the name of my third wife. Oh, yep. I doubt it. Uh, yep, yep. L e i g h <laughs> Ashley. Or maybe I, do I still have that civil war on with that that podcast host? Who is that? What's her name? Ashley. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, that's why I called. By you the Ashley. way, mm. everyone was on her side. You were wrong. You've been peeking in that Discord because I've been peeking in that Discord too. I, gotta, I, don't, I don't know what this code there is. is. A, there is a... I talk to people through a giant tree who is a mutant and also an so island. So there is a place on the internet, you know the internet, No. that is like Reddit, but calm. And that's Discord. Reddit is where the 4chan people went when they grew up. Yeah, but not. it's like not full of nice people. Reddit? No, Discord. Oh. I'm describing Discord. <laughs> Reddit is where the, the wackos go. Mm-hmm. Discord is where the cool people go. Yeah. The calm people. Yeah. I call it like a library for cool people. So I built an account and I'm a lurker in the that podcast uh, Discord. Oh, you know what's funny is so am I. Yeah. Because there are definitely people who have that after their yeah. username. You, you look around there. There was a username yeah, yeah, was, was, yeah, was text. Yeah, His yeah, username yeah, was called yeah, Kurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm a lurker in there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, all these people, they they were not a fan. They were on this Ashley side, mm-hmm. which is why I said Ashley. I'm so riled up by her. <laughs> riled up. She's never going to be a guest on Texman, Kurt. You hear me? Okay, fine. Never. Fine. Okay. And uh, she, she called me up one day and insulted me mm. on her podcast. And all these people in her Discord were taking her side. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't believe it. Okay. I don't understand <laughs> What do you think our third episode should be at after we talk about celebrity horses? What should the third How episode? How many celebrity horses do you think there are? Seabiscuit, Black Beauty, Black Stallion, Drago, what else? There's a lot of celebrity horses. Don't you cannot open Google <laughs> yes, off I, the top of your yes, head. Yes, I can. I'm staring S- at a computer. Silva. There's a uh there's a bunch of them, I bet. I typed in celebrity sources, not celebrity <laughs> horses. <laughs> Texas lost! Celebrity horses. Let's find out how many celebrity horses are. Uh, None. Apparently, well, there's an article that says 10 celebrity horse addicts. They're about people that are the celebrities that are. William Shatner. Is that guy from The Crown who's dead now? Uh, the Philip. Lone, the Lone Ranger. No, apparently I'm, I can see it. Number one is Kelly Cuco. Harley Quinn herself. I was like, who is that? Kelly Cuoco. How do you say her name? Who knows? Jeremy Irons apparently addicted to horses. How many horses does he have? Uh, it doesn't say, but there's a picture of him kissing a horse with his shirt off, and it's kind of creepy. I'm just I'm telling you. Zero out of ten. Do not like. Go Google, everybody out there. Jeremy Irons kissing, kissing a, horse. a horse with a shirt off. It is a, it is a strange. Richard Hammond. Who's that? He's a Top Gear guy. Madonna. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland, apparently, is a big horse I person. do not believe that Madonna or Kiefer Sutherland can ride a horse. Uh, Vigo Mortensen, there's a picture. I of- was going to say, Vigo Mortensen purchased both Hidalgo and Brago. One of the Bragos, so he should be on that list. Russell Crowe is apparently His a big horse person. His first book is called The Horse is Good. Jamie Foxx is a big horse person. Jamie Foxx? Yeah. Yeah. William Shatner? In Django Unchained, it says, Jamie Foxx rode his own horse named Cheetah. Cheetah? It's not a cheetah, it's a horse. No, oh, up. but Cheetah apparently is a little chestnut gelding with a gorgeous white blade. He would have to be a gelding if he was going to be on camera. If they're not gelded, they have gigantic man parts. Yeah. Yeah. When he took the part of Django, he brought his own horse. He requested that he could ride his own horse. Do you think he got an extra paycheck for that? I bet he got paid for che- that's, Cheetah. I think that's Cheetah's what great. I mean. Yeah. I think Do you he- know an animal on set, the starting rate is $1,000. That is more than any of the background people. $1,000 a same- day? Yes. That's a good rate. And if it's an exotic animal, then it's much more um, expensive. Speaking of good rates, Kurt, if they ever did another X-Men movie, would you appear in a nude scene? Not if I was played by Cody Smith McPhee. Who's Cody Smith McPhee? That weird looking kid who played him and who was also in oh, Power I, of the Dog. I hate him. You know, I once saw him <laughs> at a convention and I thought it was you. That's and, upsetting. And he he didn't know the answers to any of my questions mm. and it, made, it just made me mad. Did you hug him and he did not hug you back? That was part of it. Mm. Yeah. I did a little, you know, caress into the neck that I do because I love touching your fur. And uh, he didn't respond. Mm. He actually shoved me away and used mace. <laughs> and then I went, I said, Kurt, what are you doing? He said, I'm not Kurt. And I said, of course you are. Okay. And then I figured it out. Yeah. After my eyes hurt. Kurt. Yeah. They rhymed. Sort of. What do you want episode four of Texman to be about? 
I want episode four of Textman to be all of the ex women I have had sex with because for a priest oh. I get around. Have you had a sex? Have you had sex with a lot of the ex women? Yes. Really? Uh, very Can you drop some names or some hints? Storm. Can you drop some hints? You had you 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 played this around with Storm? Yeah, this is literally a panel that they drew a tiny little night collar face in front of my tiny little night collar so that you could not see it. And Storm walked into the room from like five years ago. Oh boy, that's a racy. <laughs> yeah, we're getting racy for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, Yeehaw! sexy for the holidays. Can we, can we name this podcast Sex Men? Sure. Sex is Tex Men? <laughs> no. No, okay. Who else? Can I make a prediction? Sure. Can I make a guess? Sure. Magneto. Yeah, absolutely. Oh boy, really? So those things always when you're a mutant, we are beyond all um, contemporaneous sexuality. Yeah, you're homo superior. Is that right? That's right. Uh, and sex is homo superior, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've been to one of those orgies. <laughs> Sorry to the children listening. They, they know. Well, look, we're, look, we're not saying anything you can't see in a Ben-Hur movie. That movie's, yeah. that movie's rated G, yeah. by the way. Or on TikTok. Or on TikTok, or on basically. TikTok I've seen a lot of weird TikToks this year. Was I in some? No. Too bad. There's a lot of TikToks of, uh, uh, there's a lot of TikTok dancing. Yeah. A lot of TikToks of, like, people making food. Yeah. Uh, that Gordon Ramsay fella yells at him a lot. Yeah, that's funny. There's a lot of TikToks out there of uh, people just doing movements. Movements. Yeah. Hey. If you're on TikTok a lot, you know what I'm talking about. But if they're not actually doing things, but they're doing the movement of the thing, and uh, it's it's weird. Okay. And they get a lot of views. Okay. But they're fully clothed. Okay. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> don't get into that TikTok hole. This is why I don't watch TikTok. It's a weird hole. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who, who else? Uh, Jubilee? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Dracula? You know, Dracula has, been, has encountered the X-Men several times. Yeah, but he's not a mutant. I only have sex with mutants. Actually, I think in his their universe, he is. Who knows? Franklin Richards? No. He's, he's a, a giant. He's a teenager. He's of age now. He's a giant. He's like 18 now. No. I okay. did not have sex with an 18-year-old. All right. Good for you. What about, a giant. what about the Wendigo? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fuzz on fuzz, baby. Fuzz on fuzz. Maybe that should be the name of our podcast. Fuzz on fuzz. Fuzz on fuzz. Tex on fuzz. You're not very fuzzy. I have a beard. Yeah, but you don't. Well, afraid. I actually have a mustache. I don't have a beard. You have a head of mutton chops. Uh, mutton chops. Yeah, mutton chops. They're pretty furry. Yeah, I'm pretty furry. Yeah. Have you seen the picture? Yeah. You see the picture I took this year? Yes, yeah. I took it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little uh, piggly wiggly like rope around yeah, it, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Frame. Yeah. yeah. Sent it out. I know. I got it sent out. I got mailed to a bunch of people. I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's like a good old picture of me. Mm -hmm. oh, I look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kurt. Well, yeah. final, my final question on our, our first and possibly final episode of Texman. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe randomly it'll show up somewhere this year. Hashtag Texman, yes. Uh, Kurt, if you could spend one day with anyone in the world, at any spot in the world, like your favorite place. What's your favorite place, by the way? Wherever you are. Ooh. If you could spend one day at uh, Texas Ranch somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's say Sunnyside, Texas. Real place. Look it up. Who would be that person that you could spend with? Who? You. That's good. I was baiting this question pretty pretty big, <laughs> Kurt, and I'm glad that you took the bait. Möchtest du heute ein Geschenk kaufen? What's that mean? <laughs> Do you want to buy, uh, can you buy a gift today? Can you buy a gift today? Or yeah. it should be, willst du... Uh, heute was that Krakowin? Geschenk kaufen. Yeah, is Krakowin. You're speaking Krakowin? Is that yeah. what you're speaking? You see that little speech bubble? That's Krakowin. I'm not a comic book character, so I don't speak speech bubbles. Only comic book character. You think you're not a comic book character? I'm a real you think you're, person. You think you're not broadly drawn? I'm a podcast of character. Of varying quality I, from run to run? I <laughs> am a podcast character. There is a difference between a comic book character and a podcast character. Barely. <laughs> One of them you can see the parts, and one of them you cannot see the parts. Yeah, you see my parts all the time. I do. Everybody knows you record this naked. <laughs> yep. yep. Just a cat, just a hat and a uh, bolo tie. Uh, very similar to Kevin Feige, I've heard. You know, I've heard he's Records a completely naked. He's a pantless fellow. Apparently, he never wears pants. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. He is, you know, it's very, very. He controls my public image, you know. He does. Sad. No, that's weird. Yeah. So you don't get a dime when there is an action figure? There's an action figure of you in the studio right now in Texas. Top-notch, tip-top podcast studio. I mean, if you think of 
If you mean like, do they send me a check? No. Can I teleport into any vault in the world? Yes. Mm-hmm. So kind mm-hmm. of. All right, Kurt. Well, any final words, you, any holiday messages you would like to give to our listeners? The first episode of Text Me! That's going to be a theme song. Copyright. Not if I do it like this. <laughs> or what if I did it all in Texas? Text, 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 text. <laughs> Please. Text, 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 text. Please don't. Da, 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 text, text, text. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> Any, you got a holiday message here, Kurt? No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sound very German there, Kurt. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Kurt. Thank you for that. Schnell. Thank you for that, uh, Kurt. Uh, and definitely not Ashley, Kurt. <laughs> Man, I get that lady's on my brain, Kurt. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, you're a very typical man on the internet where a woman proved you wrong and you can't let it go. That's pretty, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's the Texas way, as they say. That's the internet way. It's, it's the Texas way. Yeah. Uh, so no holiday message, just nine. Just nine. Just nine. No. Uh, I, I would like to give our... As a priest, nine. I would like, I would like to give our, mess, our messengers and our listeners a uh, holiday message, if I may. Okay. All right, you ready? <laughs> yeah, that was a Christmas bullet. Just what kind you. of gun was that? Was that, uh, that was a Winchester, uh, an 1886 Winchester. Cool. I've oiled it so much that it still fires. It was my grandpappy's gun, actually. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. That is unpolite to ask on a podcast. See, I I'm age, 65, I age at a much lower rate because of my mother, so I am older than I appear. I'm 65. How old are you? I think I'm like 40 something at this point, 50 you're, maybe. You're a young, you're a pipsqueak to me. Yeah. Pipsqueak. Yeah. You don't even know. You don't even know of the time. Can you, let me tell you, let me tell you, Kurt. There was a time when I was growing up where we just put a big old block of ice in a metal box and that was our refrigerator. That's not the refrigerator, that's an ice box. We had to have an ice man. Come by. Not an X-Man, an Iceman. I know Iceman. And they, we... His name is Bobby Drake. We hated and feared him. No, he's a very nice man. We hated and feared the Iceman. We threw rocks at them. We were scared. In fact... Sounds like the way human streets music. In fact, in fact, there was a senator that tried to, that tried to pass... Regu- Kelly? Re- yeah, in fact, it was Kelly. He tried to pass regulations against the Iceman. Yes. It was a scary time, Kurt. And then he turned into a potato. He did turn into a potato. <laughs> a Mr. Potato Man, as they would say. <laughs> Mr. Potato Man. Mr. Potato Man. Good friend of mine, actually, by the way. Sure. Mr. He, well, he helped supply me in my Texas, Texas Piggly Wiggly in a uh, grocery store in Delhi. I'm sure you've been waiting for some all day to start your concert. You know, that's where this uh, studio is, is in the back of a Texas Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right outside the ranch. Yeah. In Dip Top, Texas. That's not a real place. You could Google <laughs> Look it. Look it up. <laughs> you could Google it, though. How do you know? Are you from Texas? Then you can't contradict No, me. I'm from Deutschland. I was talking to the listeners, Kurt. Ich bin von Deutschland. You mean you're from Texas? No. Texas. Who are the Deutsch, by the way? When they say Deutschland, who are the Deutsch? Ich bin Deutsch. No, but who are the Deutsch? We are Deutsch. Who's we? The Deutsch. I'm not a Deutsch. We are the Deutsch. The Germans are the ich Deutsch? Bin Deutsch? Who are the Deutsch? The Germans. Germany, German is a stupid English word. I don't know why you can't just call us Deutsch. It's not that hard to say. English is 40% derivative of German, 60% of French and Latin. Kurt, you're getting confused. You are not a German. You're an (laughs) X-Man. And this is Texman. Thank you all for listening. What a segue. I'm so good at them. Actually, most of the time I'm going to segue on the show like this. That's a new segment, everybody. Every time you do that, the room is no longer soundproof. Yeah, I know. I can see sky. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Can't wait for a plane to come over. Can't wait for the power grid to go down again in Texas. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite time of year. Yeah. Yep. That's why I have to buy 250 gallons of gasoline, by the way. I have so many generators. You have tried to end this podcast like four times. Yeah, so what? Uh, but the listeners love it. Uh, who cares? Here we go, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed your first episode of Texman. First Look, and only. We will be on Zoom, MySpace, and again, cans with string. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye out on those, everybody. Look at, you know, if you're walking down the street and you see a can with a string attached to it, put it up to your ear. You're probably going to hear Texman. What kind of can? Hmm? What uh, kind of can? Uh, 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 Bush's bean can. 
Okay. Bush's baked beans. Okay. Uh, we have lots of those in stock at Texas Piggly Wiggly. All eight locations. Eight locations. Eight locations so coming next year. So in two different specials, two different spots, you said both uh, seven and acht number of locations. So do you have seven or do you have eight? It's going to be eight. Okay, because earlier you said it's going to be seven. Did I get that mixed up? You sure did. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, it's We're going to open up an eighth location in Turkey, Texas. <laughs> Next year. Not to Turkey, Turkey. No, Turkey, Turkey Texas, Texas. Google it. It is a real place. Because they have turkeys. Yeah, they have lots of turkeys. Wild turkeys. They have wild turkeys. Would they drag you away? Uh, I don't think they're that strong. <laughs> <laughs> so quite big. They are big, but I don't think they're strong enough to, to drag a human being down the road. But about a mutant being? Well, I mean, if you, maybe you're like that dupe fella. <laughs> you float. They could probably drag dupe away. <laughs> It's the truth. Because he'd be like. I just had the image of doing like Santa Claus being flown through the sky by six turkeys. Gobble, 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 gobble. Doop. Oh, goop. Oh, doop speaks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He, he does do. He does do. He does. Uh, anyways, thank you all for listening to Text Man. Uh, take a look out. Uh, look at your podcast feeds. Look out your window. Maybe you see Never. More. Yeah, look out your window. Um, Touch grass. Maybe you'll see a pile of podcasts out there. <laughs> That's where you're going to find us. At all those cans with strings. They're mm. all over the place. They're on every, I see them every city block. Yeah. Cans with string. Where do you live? Huh? Texas. <laughs> Vent. I told you that. You know, I'm not going to tell the people. Okay. It's a privacy issue. Okay. I have 10 feet walls. I don't want them climbing over. Oh, my goodness. Unless it's Texas tip top, top notch, Texas tournament fair, I don't want them to come. Texas what? Tournament fair. Okay. So we have lots of tournaments. What kind of and tournaments? And a fair. So they're combined. Affairs? Jousting. Jousting tournaments. Okay. Vis turkeys. And, yes. And we have lots of tournaments of where people have to play Joust, the video game. Oh, that's a good game. It is a good game. It's You know what you do in Joust? Joust. You Joust! Can you get, On turkeys! Can you get knocked over by your best friend, Charles Brandon, suffer an injury to your prefrontal cortex, and then kill six women? That's a very specific reference. It is. Our second reference to Henry VIII's podcast. This is a very uh, hoity-toity podcast. I don't know how to take Insular. this. Insula. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> Happy holidays to all of you. We'll, we'll be back here somewhere around the internet, nearby the left side of the internet, I'm going to say. and you can hear, <laughs> Definitely the left side. You can hear the second episode of Texmen uh, soon. Or never. Or soon. Hashtag Texmen. Sometime in April, maybe. Yeah. I am Tex Rodeo Willerman. I am uh, Ich bin Kurt Wagner. You picked up on that, Kurt. Well done. This is your first episode as a podcast. Well done. No, it's not. Oh, well, first episode of our podcast. Yes. I can't remember. Remember a couple of years ago, I couldn't even convince you to, t- to let me visit your house. And now you're podcasting with me. I love you, Kurt. Baby. Yeah, I finally learned yes and. Ah. <laughs> After about five years. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, from f- from years. Yep. Well, thanks, Kurt. Thanks for joining us on uh, me on your own podcast. Bitte schön. What does that mean? You're welcome. Oh. You're very welcome. Well, I'm going to say goodbye and happy holidays to the listeners. We're going to end this podcast in the only way that Tex Willerman's ever going to end a podcast. I'll feed us in. I'll feed us in. I'm always going to get the last shot, Kurt. I'm not going to stop. Stop. There we go. <laughs>